Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see everyone. This is a great day. We are grateful uh, for this day, and it's so good uh, to see the communi community come out for this exciting experience as we celebrate the unveiling of our historical marker and the dedication of this marker for Douglas School. This is an important moment for all of Kokomo, and it reminds me of a quote by Muhammad Ali. He who is not courageous enough to take risk will accomplish nothing in life. Risk have been taken, and success is being shown in this moment. Recognizing that every good and perfect gift comes from God, at this time, we are grateful to have one of the alum of our school come and provide the invocation, the opening prayer, Pastor Harry Beard. Good morning. It's certainly good to be here on this grand day celebration. Are we ready to pray? Let us pray. Heads bowed. Our Father, our God, we come before you. We come with thanksgiving. We come to honor you. You are the only living God. You are the matchless God. You are the God that no one can compare to. You are alive and well today. And we just want to thank you, Lord. Can somebody say, Lord, I thank you? Thank you Lord. Because you've been so good, Lord. You brought us uh, so far through this pandemic, oh God, and you preserved each one of us that's here. Some have had it and have survived. Others have not. But yet, through it all, we're going to bless you. The scripture says, I'll bless the Lord at all time, and his praise shall be continued in my mouth. In spite of circumstances, situations, Lord, we will bless you right now. So we lift you up today, oh God, and we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this occasion that we're here today to celebrate this grand celebration of this school, the history of it, oh God, the foundation of it. And Lord, we thank you for those who have served in the capacity of this school system here at Douglas School. And we thank you, Lord, because it's yet standing. It is standing in the community. It is, it is standing tall and is ready to be reused, uh, redirected. Oh God, and we thank you for that. We ask, Lord, now for a blessing upon the purpose here that that we're here, that this, that this building will represent progress. It will inspire, it will renew, it will regenerate. It will, it will bring us together as one, oh God. And we love you for that, oh God, because you're gonna use this site here for that purpose, oh God. Lord, we pray a special blessing upon each one of the organizations that have so graciously, have so graciously supported the effort here in their finances, in their, in their giving of suggestions and technical advice and directions. We thank you for Pastor Dr. Smith. Uh, you have given him the inspiration, the drive, oh God, to push this through, oh God. And we thank you for it. And we thank you for each one, the city of Kokomo and everybody that have participated in this project. And Lord, we will bless you. Now let the peace of God rule in our hearts to which we've been called in one body and we will be thankful in Jesus' great and holy name. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Beard. Well, uh, at this time, I want to provide a welcome. First, I want to introduce myself. I am Pastor William J. Smith, Jr., pastor of the great Second Missionary Baptist Church on North Apperson Way. I am grateful for the opportunity to serve our community and to just be here as a part of this celebration. We welcome each of you uh, to this wonderful, wonderful opportunity as we celebrate the gift that God has given to this community. Today marks a significant milestone in the life of Douglas School. Tigers will be able to roar again. This school has an impressive and significant history in Kokomo. 
A little bit about the history of this school is that education for black children in the Kokomo public school system mirrors the evolution of the civil rights movement in the United States of America. Even though the 13th, 14th, and 15th amendments to the United States Constitution freed former slaves and guaranteed citizenship to all citizens, the practice of providing separate public facilities, including schools, for blacks and whites was the general procedure in both the North and the South. The revised Indiana Constitution of 1852 provided for a free public education for all children in each county and township in the state. The Indiana Constitution, however, did not stipulate that educational opportunities for black and white students must be equal. Often they were separate and unequal. The Kokomo school system had already erected a frame, one-room, colored school in 1872 on La Fountain between Richmond and Haven Street. No specific name was given to the school other than the colored school in the second ward. The school averaged about 50 and 60 students during its existence. After 1900, the African-American population in Kokomo began to grow, and shortly after World, World War I, it became clear that a facility was needed for the black children of Kokomo. The Board of School Trustees authorized the construction of a new school at the corner of Bell and Elm Streets in 1919, and classes began in the fall of 1920. The building was named for noted abolitionist Frederick Douglass, and we welcome his presence, and included four classrooms, a community room, and gymnasium. For many years, during the 1920s and 1930s, Douglass School and Kokomo High School were the only buildings with gymnasium. Luke Phillips was named the principal, and Bell Artis was his assistant. Lola Marshall uh, completed the entire staff of three and when the building opened in 1920 94 students were enrolled a fourth teacher was added to a growing enrollment in 1921 and Douglas school grew to include grades one through six from its beginning the requirement that all Kokomo colored children must attend Douglas was controversial for from its beginning Douglas had an active PTA and a community focus. The Reverend Henry A. Perry, who was principal from 1926 until his retirement in 1949, he was largely responsible for the success of the school. He expected his students to do nothing less than their best. Under his leadership, patrons raised funds for playground equipment and provided for the beautification of school grounds. The annual Arbor Day celebration found students and parents actively planting trees and bushes and building bird houses and writing essays about nature. Reverend Perry was successful in allowing First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt to Douglas School on March the 13th, 1940. Mrs. Roosevelt was greeted by the entire school. She was fascinated so much with the school and it was a jump start in a community effort to build a recreation center where we now call it the Carver Community Center. In 1949, the Indiana General Assembly enacted the anti-segregation law for public schools. This meant that separate racially segregated schools could no longer exist and Douglas School would gradually be phased out. In 1954, following the landmark Brown versus Board of Education decision by the Supreme Court of the United States of America, Douglas and Willard schools were combined to form the Willard Douglas School. History reveals this combination, however, only provided token integration. Douglas School was sold by the Board of Trustees in 1961 and has served a number of different community purposes. Willard School, which was on the corner of Bell and Monroe Street, was raised in 1974. Although at one point it seemed that Douglas School would need to be demolished, members of the community were concerned about its welfare and approached the city about the school status. 
The city of Kokomo, under the guidance of then Mayor Greg Goodnight, stepped in and partnered with the Indiana Landmarks to restore the building and transfer it to a local nonprofit, Embracing Hope of Howard County, Indiana, which is, has, is working to establish this school as a center that would provide a museum and cultural space for the community. We are grateful today that in the midst of years of neglect, in the midst of even vandalism, Douglas is still standing at the corner of Bell and Elm Street. From the words of Frederick Douglass, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. We are grateful for all who struggled. We're grateful for all who have worked for us to be able to celebrate this opportunity and this day that we can celebrate the legacy of a school and even the history uh, from its past and be able to celebrate history, knowledge, and success. Now, at this time, as we celebrate, I uh, am honored to be able to welcome the mayor of this great city, Mayor Tyler Moore, to share greetings and proclamation. Thank you, Pastor. Can everybody hear me well enough? I need to step closer. Um, uh, again, thank you, and thank you to the Embracing Hope Committee for allowing me to take part in today's uh, event and recognition and ceremony. Um, I'm joined by other members of the city administration. We've got county, city council president uh, Lynn Rudolph joining us as well. Thank you, Mr. Rudolph, for being here. And uh, Howard County Commissioner Paul Wyman is joining us here as well. And uh, someone else within the uh, city administration who had kind of taken this uh, project on as a labor of love is hiding around the corner, Tom Tolan, back there at the corner, uh, when uh, Mayor Goodnight uh, again agreed to uh, join uh, the interest in salvaging this uh, historic landmark. Uh, Tom Tolan took it uh, under his guise and, and really uh, did an amazing job uh, uh, getting the process going. So give a round of applause for Mr. Toland and the development. <laughs> Major Selden is also here from the Kokomo Police Department. Major, thank you for being here as well. But uh, again, <laughs> it is an honor to, uh, to take part and uh, continue Mayor Goodnight's vision uh, from the city of Kokomo and uh, again, preserving this historic uh, landmark uh, at this uh, at this time in, in history when uh, the interest in our uh, black heritage, not only in our community but throughout the country, is so vital. Uh, it's exciting uh, to see such a uh, meaningful repurpose of Douglas School and uh, to know that it's going to continue its legacy on educating and enriching the minds of not only current generations but future generations is, is exciting and, and I'm sure that uh, Kokomo Center Schools will have a hand in that as well. So Dr. Oswald, thank you for being here as well. Um, so without further ado, as Pastor Smith mentioned, it's, it's my honor to issue the following proclamation on behalf of the city of Kokomo. Whereas Douglas School was opened in 1920, named after American social reformer, abolitionist, statesman, and former slave, Frederick Douglass, and whereas despite the scourge of segregation, Educators like Reverend Henry Perry, principal from 1927 to 1949, worked diligently to provide a quality education for local school children. And whereas, although closing for good in 1968, Douglas School still has a tremendous historical significance to the Kokomo community. And whereas, efforts to preserve our community's heritage provide vital links to our cultural, educational, inspirational and economic legacies and whereas protecting and restoring Douglas School is a vital step in preserving our local history and affords us the opportunity to tell its story. Now therefore I, Tyler O. Moore, Mayor of the City of Kokomo, Indiana, do now declare Saturday, August 8, 2020 as Douglas School Day in Kokomo, Indiana in recognition of the historical legacy of Douglas School and all those who attended here and to further support the efforts to restore the building for the betterment of the community. In testimony whereof, I hereto set my hand and cause to be affixed the great seal of the city of Kokomo, 
done this eighth day of August in the year of our Lord, 2020. Again, by the Mayor, Tyler Moore. Thank you. I'll be back there. Thank you, uh, Mayor Moore. Uh, we are excited about uh, this opportunity and we're appreciative of the work of the city. We uh, appreciate this moment and we uh, are excited about the fact that there are individuals who attended this school who are in our presence. So those who attended Douglas School, if you are here, if you could just wave your hands to let folk know that you're here. We honor your presence here and we're grateful for uh, you uh, being here as we celebrate. Also, uh, Mayor Moore, if you could come back just for a second. We, the Douglas School Steering Team, have a gift uh, to provide to the city. It's a certificate of appreciation presented to the city of Kokomo for your support of preserving a gem of Kokomo Douglas School. This is presented on this 8th day of August 2020, celebrating history, knowledge, and success. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, we thank you. We are so excited and we are thankful for the hard work of the city that began under the previous administration and we're grateful for your leadership mayor Moore, in continuing that legacy thank you for continuing the vision and thank you again for supporting the vision the city of kokomo has been most helpful we are grateful for that village of support from the city to make this day happen from the mayor's office from the development department from uh, the street department, from the IT department, from the historical review board. We are grateful for your work. We are grateful because we had a cheerleader over at the city, none other than Tom Tolan. <laughs> Continuing to ensure that Douglas School would be preserved and we are grateful, we are grateful for your work. We wish to acknowledge and we thank uh, the city for its work and we thank, uh, we are grateful for the opportunity that we will continue to work together. We acknowledge this day the presence of many individuals who are here with us. We recognize our city officials, those who are elected officials in our city government. If you would please wave your hand, we recognize your presence here. We're grateful for our county officials, those who are here. We're grateful for your presence. Also, individuals from our school corporation, we acknowledge your presence. Also, the foundation of our churches, the pastors, we acknowledge your presence. All of our community leaders, we acknowledge your presence. Those who are doing hard work behind the scenes, we are grateful for your presence this day. We acknowledge the presence of everyone. You're here for a reason and we're grateful that you are here to celebrate with us. We acknowledge and we celebrate the board members of the Embracing Hope of Howard County. I, yours truly as the president, vice president, Shirley Young, Secretary Cynthia Hendricks and Treasurer Ed Foster. We acknowledge your presence. We also are grateful for the presence of Clifford Signs and for the use of their wonderful digital sign and even for their donations and signage and various aspects of just supporting this event. Thank you for ensuring the installation of our marker Thank you, Clifford Signs. We're grateful for Hayes Brothers. We are grateful for your work in, in construction and making sure that these windows came in properly and making sure that this building looks as wonderful as it does right now. 
And we are also grateful again for the city and supporting all of these efforts through financial backing. We're grateful to the city of Kokomo. We also look forward to the future and we acknowledge the presence of individuals from the Community Foundation of Howard County. We are grateful that uh, Joe Dunbar is here uh, representing the, uh, Coco, uh, the Community Foundation of Howard County and they are supporting us through funding of $6,500 for a feasibility study and the nomination for our National Historic Landmark. We look forward to continuing the work together and we look forward to having strong partnership and we're grateful for the Carver Community Center. We hope to continue partnering together as we have a future together in transforming this North End. We're grateful for Indiana Landmarks who continues to provide financial backing as we continue the renovation and restoration of this school. We're grateful for Party City and the donation of the balloons uh, that will be released in memory of our loved ones. We're grateful for those who are taking pictures. Uh, specifically, we're grateful for the, not only the city and also our media, but we also are grateful for uh, Brother Jerry McCoy. We also are grateful there are two individuals who I can call on for anything, and they'll be right there. And that is Kenosha uh, Pig and Donna Safor. We're grateful. We celebrate and thank God for the mighty men of Second Missionary Baptist Church and their hard work in preparing and making sure that these grounds look as good as they do. And I am grateful to the Second Missionary Baptist Church family. I love you so much. I want to recognize the committee members uh, who serve with me and I am just grateful to have them as partners on our team our steering team for Douglas School. That is, and, and if you could, if you're seated, if you could stand, if you're standing already, if you could just wave so the individuals know uh, who you are. Harry Beard, Joe Dunbar, Janie Young, McFerrin Wright, Sarah Heath, Marsha Bowling, Robert Hayes, Dana Wilson, Mary Dennis, Shirley Childs, Amy Russell, John Malone, Catherine Hughes, and Sharon Reed. We are grateful. Let's celebrate this great committee who works hard. We are grateful for that. And committee members, I have a special gift for each of you. Also, we are grateful that one of the oldest members of uh, who attended uh, Douglas School, Ralph Greer, is here. We celebrate his presence. Woo! We are grateful for your presence. We are grateful. I would like to personally thank some individuals who stick with me and who watch me burn the midnight oil. That is my wife, the fabulous Foxy first and last lady, my wife, Deneen J. Smith. And also my boys. I am grateful for Andre, Brandon, and Lamonte who stick with me. Thank you so much for uh, you putting up with me and all of the hard work that I've been doing and also picking up boxes and helping uh, whenever I ask. Thank you. At this time, we're going to uh, make way that we would remember. One of the blessings of uh, this, uh, an event like this, is that we have memories. We have the opportunity to remember all of the good old days all of the things that may have happened in school 
that might have stayed in school. But I'm sure your parents knew what was going on before you got home. But we are grateful for all of the students and the staff. And we recognize that even in the midst of, of COVID-19, there are individuals who are not able to be with us and we celebrate their presence and their prayers. But we also want to recognize and remember those who have passed on. At this time, we're going to take a moment to remember those loved ones, those classmates, those teachers, those friends that we have lost along the way. As we prepare to release balloons in their honor, let us take now a moment of silence. Those we love don't go away. They walk beside us every day. Unseen, unheard, but always near. So loved, so missed, so very dear. We released these balloons in honor of each of you as they float freely in the air. Balloons are existing with all of our care that we have released to the skies above that it's really important that it carries and shares our dear love. We are grateful and we will never forget those individuals who have paved the way for us to be right here where we are. Amen. Amen. Well, this is the moment that we've all been waiting for. This is the moment of unveiling. At this time, I'm excited to bring to the marker uh, Brother McFerrin Wright and Sister Dana Wilson to come and assist in the unveiling of the historical marker for this great school. Today, we move from conversation to actuality. We can talk about the history, converse daily about it, talk about how great it was, but unless we can show the photos and the historical documents and hear wonderful stories told by those who lived it, how do we know it even existed? We are grateful that we have the opportunity to unveil this marker, which was fun funded strictly from city sources and ha was installed by the city late last year. Let us unveil. <laughs> Woo! Wonderful, wonderful. It reads, it is named after Douglas School, named after statesman and former slave Frederick Douglass. This school opened in 1920. That year, the Kokomo School Board recommended that all African American students in first through seventh grades enroll only at Douglas. With no school transportation available, many elementary students walk two miles or more, often past all white elementary schools to receive their education. One of the school's highlights happened the, the morning of Wednesday, March 13, 1940, when First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt made a surprise visit. Principal Henry A. Perry led her to classrooms where she spoke with teachers and students. Mrs. Roosevelt posed for a photograph on the front steps surrounded by students. Reverend Henry Perry was the school's principal from 1927 to 1949. In April 1940, Principal Perry led an organizational meeting in the school's basement gymnasium where a board of directors was elected and $500 was pledged for the future establishment of the Carver Community Center. At the meeting, the teachers of Douglas School pledged $115. In 1949, the Indiana legislature 
required school districts to end racial segregation in public schools by 1954. In 1954, the school board merged all black Douglas School with nearby Willard School, three blocks south. Students in first through third grades attended Willard, while students in fourth through sixth attended Douglas. In a 1967 racial discrimination case, a U.S. District Court ordered Douglas School to be closed. The judge cited the school's inferior educational resources, and the following year, Douglas School ceased operation. We are excited that this marker will continue to tell the story of a school's past with hopes of a promised future. Well, in closing, again, we are grateful for the presence of everyone. We are grateful for this special day and this opportunity as we celebrate another step in the life of Douglas School. We are grateful for our partners. Partners, We're grateful for the partnership now with the Kokomo Howard County Public Library System. Join us in seeing what the school will become. You can complete a survey today. Paper copies are available or you can click on a link that is provided on the Kokomo Howard County Public Library System's website. Also, we invite you to enjoy a treat today at Sonic, a slushy, a burger, or some other refreshment. By supporting Sonic, you can support also Douglas School because all customers who round up to the nearest dollar during this weekend those additional funds will go to our restoration project. <laughs> Lastly, we want to remind you that you can support us. There are envelopes that are provided that you can put a donation to assist us in restoring this school. It is my hope that this is only the beginning the beginning of us building a beloved world community, the beginning of us discovering our past to inform us in the present and build up our future. This is only the beginning of us understanding the importance that we are stronger together. This is the beginning of us putting the city of Kokomo on the map for the Midwest that celebrates the lives of all people. The beginning of a place that celebrates history, knowledge, and success. We will continue to march on in faith of one whose name this school reflects, remembering the painful moments of our past and restoring this school as a place that will provide hope and direction for our present and future generations. Again, I invite you to join me in supporting this effort and whatever you can do to help us, it is appreciated. Not only can you give through envelopes, but you can also download the Givelify app. That's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y, the Givelify app. And you can there find Embracing Hope of Howard County and provide a donation. Also, be, uh, we invite you to order one of our Christmas ornaments. We have a sale going on, and you can see Amy Russell over at the tent. Also, we're looking forward to, uh, in the future, selling copies of our pen and ink drawing which was provided to us by Patty Host. This drawing will be an opportunity and a, a wonderful inspiration in your home to remind you of this great school. Well, like Desmond Tutu, my humanity is bound up in yours for we can only be human together. So let us be human together. Let us work together. If you have pictures, artifacts, or information to support and preserving this great school, let us use our gifts together to build, this, to build this community. Help us together to make an impact in Kokomo, Howard County, and beyond. And let this be a place that highlights our strength as a community to remember the past, celebrate the present, and launch into our future. Now, Pastor Harry Beard will come, and he will close us out in prayer. Let us bow our heads again. Let us bow our heads again. Our Father, our God, we thank you, Lord, for this occasion, this grand occasion. We thank you, Lord, for the energy and the drive that's been generated 
through this occasion, Lord. We pray now that you will bless the projects going forward, O oh God. You are able to make it a success, O oh God. You are able to bless the purpose. You are able to bless the direction. Now, Lord, we pray that you will bless each one of your people here. I pray a blessing on each one as we go to our several places, O oh God. And I pray, Lord, that you continue to be blessed. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. 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 You are now dismissed. God bless you.